Hi, welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we are going to review uh, four ways to solve quadratics. So this is a good Algebra 2 concept because you're re just refreshing on ways to solve quadratics. So we're going to look at four of the methods. The first one is factoring. Now there are lots of different ways to factor, so I'm just going to do two examples. Um, first of all, you need to get your quadratic in descending order. So you want your terms from highest degree to lowest degree and get it set at equal to zero. Then you look for common factors. So this one only has two terms, so I'm going to factor out the common factor of 3x and I'm left with x plus 7 equals zero. So once you get it factored, then you're going to set each factor equal to zero. So this is a factor and the binomial x plus 7 is a factor. And once you set those equal to zero, then you can just solve. So this first one has a solution of zero, and the second term has a solution of negative seven. So this one has two solutions. So two solutions will make this term equal to zero. And that is when it's zero and when it's negative seven. And you can always go back and plug them in and double check your answers. Okay, so let's look at a second, second factoring problem. This one's a trinomial with a lead coefficient of one right here. So we're gonna try the simple method. What multiplies to positive four, but adds to negative four? Well, that's gonna be x minus two times x minus two is equal to zero. And again, set your factors equal to zero. Now what's different about this one is we have the same factor so you only have to set one of them equal to zero to find our one and only solution. So x is two. Okay, so that's reviewing factoring. Now let's go up and review taking the square root. This method works best when b is equal to zero. What do I mean by that? Well, when you have a quadratic, you have ax squared plus bx plus c. That's our standard form. When b is equal to zero, that means this term does not exist. We only have the quadratic term or the x squared, and we have c or a constant. And if you notice in this problem, we have a 3x squared, and then we have a 5 and a 43, and we don't have an x to the first power. So that's the best time to use the square root method. So let's solve by adding 5 to both sides. You want to isolate the x squared term to get the x by itself. Okay, then we're going to add 43 in 5, and we get 48. Okay, divide both sides by 3, so x squared is equal to 16. Now once you get to here, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So square root the left side, square root the right side. So the square root of x squared is just x. The square root of 16, you have to be careful. You have two solutions, both a positive and a negative 4, because 4 squared is 16 and negative 4 squared is also 16. So that one has two solutions. Now let's look at completing the square, the third method. Okay, what you can do is you can look at it and say, okay, this one has a lead coefficient of 1 and what multiplies to 53 that has a difference of 2 and there's not any factors. So we're actually going to use the um, completing the square also known as CTS, complete the square method. Okay, to complete the square, we're going to take the b term. We're going to half it, so take negative 2 and divide it by 2, and then we're going to square it. So that's going to give me a positive 1. And I'm going to add that. Whoops, I forgot to do one step. First thing you want to do is you want to move this constant to the other side. Sorry. You want to move the constant to the other side so it becomes a positive 53. Then you want to take this middle term half it, and then square it, and then you're going to add it to both sides. So you're going to add 1 to both sides because half of negative 2 is 1 and 1 squared is positive 1. Now what we've created is a perfect squared trinomial. In other words, this is going to factor into x minus 1 quantity squared, which means x minus 1 times x minus 1. We're just going to write it as a perfect square. And that's going to equal 2 add these two. 54. Now again, it's kind of like the square root method up here. We have a perfect square. That perfect square just happens to be a binomial. But you use the same method. You're going to square root both sides. 
So you get x minus 1 is equal to, and again, we have two solutions on this side, both a positive and a negative root 54. <clears throat> now, to solve for x, we're going to add 1 to both sides. So add 1 and add 1. Now, this is in a radical, and it won't, well, it will simplify. We're going to do that in a second, but it won't simplify to a perfect integer. So there's our answer, 1 plus or minus root 54. Now, the square root of 54 does simplify because we know 6 times 9 is 54, and 9 is a perfect square. So we can then simplify that to 1 plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3 root 6. And there is our final answer. So the answer is 1 plus or minus 3 square root of 6. Okay, and that's the completing the square method. Now, the last method we're going to look at is the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula works well when you can't factor. So this one, you, what multiplies to 10 that has a difference of 2? Um, well, nothing does. So this is a good time to use the quadratic formula. Now, let's review the quadratic formula. It's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, we have to define our a, b, and c for this. Well, a, b, and c, it just comes out of standard form. Remember, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 is standard form. So a in this case is 1, b is a positive 2, and c is a negative 10. So let's plug those in. a is 1, b is positive 2, and c is negative 10. So let's plug in the opposite of b. Well, the opposite of positive 2 is negative 2, plus or minus the square root. b squared is 4, minus 4 times a times c. So 4 times minus 4 times 1 times negative 10, all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. Now, to simplify this, we'll get negative 2, plus or minus now, this is the hardest part, and this part under the radical is called the discriminant. So we're going to have 4. The double negative makes a positive. So 4 plus 40 is 44 all over 2. And that gives us negative 2 plus or minus. Now, let's think about the square root of 44. That breaks down to 4 times 11, and 4 is a perfect square. So we can simplify that to 2 root 11. So 2 root 11 all over 2. Now, we're not quite done. We just need to simplify this. Okay, this is the place where a lot of students can get to and then make a mistake. You have one, two, three terms. All three of these are divisible by 2, so you need to divide all three by 2 to reduce it. So you get negative 1 plus or minus radical 11. And that is the final answer to the problem. So that's quadratic formula and just a quick review of those four methods. There is one other method, graphing, but that will be on a separate video. Hope this video was helpful.